Hey guys, how's it going? So I got the Razorblade 16 2024 model. This one's with the i9 14900HX, the brand new processor, well, quote unquote, brand new processor for 2024, along with this new OLED panel that's QHD and 240 hertz and now supports G-Sync. And I guess that's about it. That's all that's different. So let's just bridge through all of this really quickly. So this is not an engineering sample or not under NDA or anything like that. This is just a retail version, so I'm free to run whatever benchmarks I want and I can say whatever I want. I'm really happy about that. So let's just briefly talk about this laptop. It is an amazing looking laptop, still one of the best. And you know what? Everybody compares this to the MacBook. So this is with the new M3 Pro chip. So I'm just gonna do some build quality comparisons. I mean, I know this is the 14 inch versus the 16 inch. It would have been nice if I had both 16 inches, but I just gotta work with what I have, so. So in terms of build quality, I mean, you know what? I still feel like Apple has an upper hand here. I can, like this metal feels a lot sturdier. And in terms of the lid and the hinge, they both feel incredibly solid. Just about similar, I would say. So then the keyboard, there's always a lot of comparisons between the two of them. But honestly, I've been typing with them side by side. They both feel identical, to be honest. If I had a blindfold, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference. So somebody's copying somebody. The trackpad is massive on this Blade 16. It's really wonderful to use too. It's got a fairly fingerprint resistant coating on the metal and it works, it works really well. And it manages to actually be black, unlike the, uh, unlike the MacBook, which they say that this is a space black but this is a gray there's just no denying it but yeah solid solid laptop probably still the best built windows laptop so just from using it there are a few things that i've noticed different like razor synapse so let's take a look at that all right guys so let's talk about some of the new changes for razor synapse 2024. so now there's actually four different profiles there's balance silent turbo and with turbo you can customize the fan speed very simple controls, but now let's look at custom. Things got a little bit crazier here. So similar to before, you can set the CPU to boost, which is what I usually do in this mode. You can do CPU overclocking, and I'll click on that in a second, and you can set the GPU to high, and then there's max fan speed. I will not be testing anything with max fan speed unless you guys really request it. It's, the, the microphone's facing me, so you probably won't be able to hear it, but it's just too loud. It's just uncomfortably loud, and it's not worth the performance gains. But anyway, so let's look at CPU overclocking. So after this warning message, I'll just hit OK, and you can create different profiles now. So this is brand new for 2024, or maybe there's an update to it after I got rid of my razor blades from last year. So let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. There's Turbo Boost Short Power Max, Turbo Boost Power Max in Watts, and Turbo Boost Power Time Window. So there's a lot to play around here. I'm not gonna mess around with any of that for any of my benchmarks. Um, at least in this first look, I'm only going to do what the system has set up for me in terms of one click settings. So I consider custom CPU overclocking and setting the GPU to high to be close enough of a one click. So all of my performance that you see later on is going to be based off of that. So now my favorite section, let's look at the display. So now you're actually getting a dynamic refresh rate. So let's take a look at the window settings. Oh, so before I get there, this does support HDR and I'll do some benchmarks analysis soon. So this is what it looks with, this is how it looks with HDR on and this is how it looks with HDR off. And as you can see, it looks good. There are some laptops out there that look completely different when you turn on HDR. So this is indicative of a high color gamut. I'll test more, like I said, later on. Um, keep going. And what I really wanted to show here is this supports dynamic refresh rate from 120 to 240 hertz. So, I mean, on battery, you're not going to get good battery life with this setting. So some of the other ones I've seen support dynamic refresh rate from 60 to 120. This one only wants to do 120 to 240. So in that case, honestly, when I'm on battery mode, when I'm on battery, I'm going to be at 60 hertz. And when I'm plugged in, I just want to be at 240 hertz. 120 hertz doesn't give me enough power savings. So what you can do right here is click on battery refresh rate, which will 
bring the laptop down to 60 hertz when you unplug it. So let me do that really quickly. It'll go black for a second or no. Whoa, cool. They used to go black. Yep, but now it's just more seamless. That's awesome. It's, the, it's these little quality of life improvements that I always like to see year over year, even though to be honest, this is a minor. So there's actually a command validated report. So let's take a look at that. So, so Razer calibrated this at P3, white point of, of D65. That's usually 6,500, which is correct. Gamma is 2.2. The Delta E is 1.27. That's good. That's imperceivable from perfect. I'll look into this more when I run my own calibration. You can change the different color gamuts depending on the application that you're using. So if I would say for most gamers, keep it a native. This does look, this DCI-P3 looks a little bit more accurate. Adobe RGB is a different color gamut. This is primarily used for photographers. Rec 709, that's an older standard. sRGB, which is what most of the web is on. So when I'm making my videos, I'm looking to see how it looks on DCI-P3 and sRGB. And, and when I'm editing photos with taken with like a professional mirrorless camera, I'm looking at them both in Adobe RGB and sRGB to make sure that they look good in both formats. And I'm usually tweaking the colors to make sure that's the case. So it's really nice having these. Anyway, so new to this year is sound. So it looks like you can customize the equalizer for these speakers. And to my knowledge, that's new. I don't know if you were able to do that before. Again, let me know in the comments. I haven't used a razor blade laptop since early last year. And then battery, uh, there's a battery health optimizer. I don't feel like turning that on right now. And then here you can mess around with the lighting. Um, I'll save this for the full review, but that immediately doesn't look that much different from previous razor blades. So cool. All right, so nice quality of life updates to Razor Blade Synapse. So now let's talk about this new display. It's QHD 240Hz OLED and it supports G-Sync. Apparently this wasn't able to be done before. Now it is. Glad to have it. I've only had this laptop for less than 24 hours, so I didn't get to spend much time with it. But immediately I can tell this panel looks incredibly clear. It's really crisp. The only quirk I'm able to see is flicker, and there is some of it. Uh, I'll have to see how it affects me long term, but you, for the first night it hasn't been bothering me at all. So let's get in. So let's look at an analysis of this panel. So what I've noticed when I run it in the different profiles, as I pointed out in Synapse, it, it does seem to clamp the colors. But the testing I wanna talk about right now is just the native setting in Synapse that unlocks the full gamut of this panel. And man, does it look good. So 100% sRGB, of course. 96% Adobe RGB. By the way, if you guys are getting any value so far, hit that like button. And 100% of DCI-P3. No surprise there. So and you are getting 94% of NTSC, which is higher than I typically see. So with brightness, good things and bad things. Minimum brightness of 4.2 nits, that's great. So I can use this laptop in low light settings without burning my eyes, even at the lowest brightness. Max brightness is 419 nits, so I'm not getting the full 450 nits, and I tested it in HDR, and I'm still only getting 419. The, the testing software I use doesn't really do well with HDR footage, so when I did look at some HDR videos, the same videos I always look at, and the same games that I always play, those HDR highlights do look bright. With OLED, 419 nits looks just as bright, if not brighter, than a 500 nit IPS display without any local dimming or anything like that. Obviously, you're getting an infinite contrast ratio. And, and here's another thing I want to point out. Look at the white point. It remains fairly accurate at all different brightness levels, which isn't something you always see. So, one thing I've realized with a lot of my previous gaming laptops, I had to be at max brightness all the time because that's what looked the best. But it looks like Razer tuned this display well enough to where it looks great. It looks just as accurate in all brightness settings. So kudos to Razer and Kalman if they helped with that. And color accuracy. So Kalman's statements in that analysis report I read is correct. So this is a very, very accurate screen. If you're any type of creator or you just value a good looking screen and an accurate screen, this 
is probably the best that you can get right now. Okay, so last I want to talk about is the performance of this brand new 14900 paired with this RTX 4080. At some point, I'm going to be getting in a 4090 laptop. Hopefully, I get the GT18 in soon. The GPU is performing as expected. I was maybe wondering if maybe this is just a better bend 4080 that would might perform better but it doesn't seem like it but let's look at the cpu so i ran this twice just regularly on the table and it was really warm in this room but then i was like you know what okay fine so it, yes it is better than just about everything we saw last year in a smaller package smaller relatively speaking compared to like the the scar 18 or the gt77 but what I did was I kind of cheated a little bit. So I cranked up the AC, then I re-ran it, and then I held the laptop up like this so you could get better airflow. And at that point, this laptop did not thermal throttle at all. It thermal throttled when I got the first score of the 16,823. But when I did it this way, I got 17,848. So that is by far the highest score I've ever seen. So that's like a 10 to 12% increase. So that's about what you'll be typically get gen over gen. And unfortunately, I don't think that the Razer Blade 16 is the best laptop to stress this CPU, something like the GT 18 will be in. I'm really hoping I could find the budget to get that soon. So I might have to sell off my GT 77 or something. So now let's start talking about some real games. So let's look at Horizon Zero Dawn. At 4K, it's using most of the GPU, so you're not seeing any benefits there. And then again, at 1440p, you're not really seeing the benefits. But when you get to 1080p, that's when the GPU is no longer the bottleneck and the CPU becomes the bottleneck. And look at that, I'm getting the highest frames I've gotten compared to any other laptop I've tested. So one thing you can take away from this, if you play a lot of competitive shooters, if, especially if you're targeting higher frame rates, maybe the upgrade to this could be beneficial to you. So next let's look at Guardians of the Galaxy, and this is a very demanding game, and I keep it at the highest settings with ray tracing along with DLSS Ultra. So at 4K, you're not really seeing any benefits. At 1440p, the CPU does help, and at 1080p, the CPU helps a lot more. So I think you're kind of getting the point right now. Once, once you're running at QHD, which happens to be what the resolution of the screen is, you do start to see some benefits. If you're running at 1080p or low settings to maximize frames, you will see a bit of a benefit with the 14900. I'm not gonna say it's monumental though, so it's not enough to like run out and you have to get it right now. So next, finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is my favorite benchmark. Going forward, I'm gonna start running benchmarks for different games. If you have any games you want me to start covering, let me know in the comments. Once it has a built-in benchmark, I will run it. But anyway, this is where you're gonna see the biggest benefit from the 14900HX. Not much difference of 4K. With the help of the new 14900HX, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is running as fast as a 4090 from last year. But if you run it at 1080p, you get even higher scores. So yeah, like I'm seeing, there are some benefits to upgrading this year, though they aren't massive increases. Okay, so now let's talk about Cinebench. I ran both 23 and 24, but I want to point out that I run Cinebench at its 10 minute mark for each. I use this to stress test the system to see how it performs under load for long periods of time. If it starts to throttle to the point where it really reduces performance. So that's the whole point of this. So I know my scores are lower than what a lot of you guys might be expecting, but that's how I test these. I think going forward for Cinebench 2024, I'll start doing that quicker run just so you can get an idea of what that score is. But anyway, and, and the thing is the Legion 9i was the best performing CPU I, I, I've had and it, a lot of that is because of that cooling. The cooling is amazing on that machine. So even last year's model is beating this year's Razer Blade 16. But like I said, I don't think the Razer Blade 16 is the best laptop to really test this new chip. It's the first one I have, but it's probably not the best. So I'll continue to test more as we go. So if you want to see more, please get subscribed. And now let's look at Cinebench R24, where the single core is creeping up. But as you can see, it's not able to beat the Apple M3 Pro or the M3 Max. But on the multi-core side, it seems like the GT77 is able to beat the Razer Blade 16 with the 14900HX. So I think that's gonna do it for this first look. So far, I've been really liking it. 
Not much in terms of excitement because it is relatively similar to last year. Just a new CPU that performs a little bit better. The Actually the OLED panel is probably the biggest show here and, and if you've been thinking about an upgrade just for the panel, I could see that it could be worth it for you. I gotta spend some more time gaming with this. I've only had this for like less than 24 hours. Just trying to push out a video as fast as I can so I'm going to come back with more coverage and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.